everyone, welcome back to another video. So today I have Johanna Basford's brand new coloring book, Small Victories, and my Prisma colors. If you saw my last video where I did a flip through of this coloring book, or if you have been following Johanna Basford since she's released this brand new coloring book, you know that she created this coloring book so you can sit and color something rather quickly, get up, take a breather, come back and color something else. So the book contains lots of little small images like you would find in her other coloring books, but this book has several pages all throughout the book of those little small images and then bigger images on the other pages. And it's really just the cutest coloring book. So today I wanted to sit down and color something and see how much time it takes me to just color one little small image on the page. So that's what we're gonna do today. If you check the description box down below, I will have a link to this adorable coloring book. I will also have links down there for my Facebook group, my email list, my Etsy shop, and my Patreon if you'd like to support me there. I also now have channel membership. If you would like to find more information about that, you can click the join button down below the video. Okay, so I checked the comments of my last video because I had told y'all if you wanted to see me color something specific in this coloring book to let me know which image it was. And I really loved this adorable little frog. I marked the page so that I could find it quickly, but I am absolutely in love with this little frog here. He is so cute. And one of you had suggested in the comments in my last video that I color the frog. So that's what we're gonna do today. And if you notice from these images in this book, they are definitely rather small. There's not a whole lot of room to be able to blend your colored pencils or use more than one or maybe two colors. So today we're gonna see how to go about coloring something and still be able to create the depth and the dimension that you want to be able to see when you're all done coloring something. I think I've decided to use some brighter colors in the frog because I do really want the frog to stand out. And he does have a lot of little leaves laying on top of him. So what I'm gonna try to do for this one as I go through and choose colors is I'm just going to color my leaves something else other than green. <laughs> and I think it'll turn out really cute. So that is what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna start by choosing my greens for the frog because I think I'm gonna color the frog first. So here's my Prismacolor swatch chart. This swatch chart is available in my Etsy shop if you're interested. It does follow the order that they come in when you get them in the box but it's already all filled in with the names and the numbers and it makes it a lot easier for you to print it out and fill it in. Okay, so I have some greens down here at the bottom and then I have some more greens up here at the top. Now I do wanna use a color in my frog that is really going to stand out. I'm thinking that I wanna go ahead and use yellow chartreuse. I want a really bright, intense highlight for my frog. So I think that I'm gonna use the yellow chartreuse and maybe lime peel and moss green. So let me go ahead and grab those. Actually, I think the moss green might be a little bit too dark and have a little bit too much brown in it. So I think I'm gonna go yellow chartreuse, lime peel, and olive green. So let me go ahead and grab those. So I have my three colors here, and as you can see from this image, the spaces are really, really small. So I'm gonna go ahead and sharpen my pencils and make sure that I have really sharp tips so that I could get into these really small spaces. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the yellow chartreuse, and I am going to add a little bit of this into some of these spaces. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to use three colors here because these are really tiny spaces, but I'm just gonna lay this color anywhere I feel like I want a pop of color. I'm gonna go ahead and blend in some of my lime peel to the yellow chartreuse. And I don't even know if I'm going to be able to use more than two colors here, I don't know. I guess I'm gonna do a whole lot of layering with my colors so that I can use all three colors. When you're coloring in this book, you definitely want to make sure that the tips on your pencils are rather sharp because especially in this image, everything is just really close to each other and laying over another part of the image. Lots of little leaves in here covering the frog. Okay, now I have my olive green down here where I've got the bottom of the frog's chin touching the front of his body. I'm going to add some of this color in here. And this is the color that is really going to start adding a lot of that depth and really making it so that our brightest color pops a lot more. 
and really stands out. So if you wanted to color these images in this book and you only wanted to use one color in each section, you can totally do that and it would turn out really beautiful as well. So here where I have the leaves laying over the frog, I'm gonna add some of this olive green in there as well. And I'm trying to decide what color I'm gonna use for all of these other little leaves that are laying over the frog and over here on the outside of the frog. These would be really cute to add a background to as well, like around each image, or if you wanted to color every single one of these on the page, and then just do the background in one color around all of the images, you could do that as well. I get down here in his tiny little toes. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I forgot the feet over here that are sticking out. And with my darkest color, I like to do a little bit of lining. It makes the image stand out a whole lot more. And I always do that with the darkest color. And sometimes if my darkest color isn't dark enough, I'll grab another color and come back and go over it again. Now I have my lime peel and I'm going to blend it into these colors here. I'm leaving a little bit of space down here because I never used the yellow chartreuse on his feet over here and I want to be able to add that color in. So now I'm going to blend in some of the yellow chartreuse and just go over all of it. Blend it all in together. Oh wow, this color stands out so much. It's so pretty. I'm just using the yellow chartreuse to brighten up the frog and bring some of these colors together. And now I'm just using the lime peel to pull down the olive green and pull it into some of these other colors. I don't even have that many layers down here. What have I used? Maybe three, four layers. And you can see that he already has a little bit of depth. And once we come back and color in all of these little leaves that are laying over the top of the frog, he will be super cute. And that will help to create a little bit more depth and dimension. Once I go over it again here with this yellow chartreuse, you will really start to see this color really stand out. I think I'm just going to use my olive green one more time. Now the point of this book is, like I said, to just sit down in short intervals and be able to relax and get something colored pretty quickly. I think Johanna had self-care in mind when she created this book and coloring is definitely a form of self-care. It's extremely therapeutic. So if you're just having a rough day, I want to encourage you to sit down and just take some time out and color something pretty quickly. And this is the perfect book for that because you can get something colored in in one short session without feeling overwhelmed, especially if you're a beginner. This book is fantastic if you just want to learn how to use your colored pencils. And even if you just want to use one color instead of using three different colors here like I am, you can sit down and just straight color it. You could even grab your gel pens or whatever else you want to use to color some fine liners and just use different mediums. Mix them together and just take some time to yourself. Now I have my lime peel and I'm just going to use this to blend these colors in a little bit. It is really difficult though to keep that highlight there. I do have a little bit more room up here in his face. I think I'm going to leave my highlight in his face right here under his mouth. So I'm going to come back with my yellow chartreuse and work on shading that area in. Now if you're coloring along and you want something even brighter, you can always use the neon yellow, but I think I've got as much color down here that I possibly can. It seems that the tooth of the paper is pretty much filled and I do want to just sit down and color this rather quickly and not take too much time. So I'm just going to use this yellow chartreuse to blend all the colors out and then I'm gonna pick some colors for all of the leaves so I went and grabbed my color wheel because I wanted to really make the leaves pop off from the frog so I wanted to be able to use some complementary colors to create a whole lot of contrast if I look at this color wheel and I matched up the colors on my frog to the colors on the color wheel, I would say I'm probably right over here. If I want to go contrasting, I would have to go directly across. So if I go directly across, I come over here to red violets. So I'm gonna grab my swatch chart and I am going to match my color wheel up to the colors on the swatch chart. 
and choose some colors that look to be red violet. So some of my choices, I've got mulberry. Of course, I'm going to need a lighter pink to blend into that, but mulberry is a really good color. And then if I come up here, I also have Dahlia Purple, which is kind of close. And since I need other colors to blend into something like the Dahlia Purple, I can go with lavender. So I do have quite a few choices so I'm going to go ahead and grab some of my red violet colors and then I'm going to grab some colors to be able to blend into those red violets because I don't want all of the leaves to be exactly the same. And if you look at all of the different leaves around here, the spaces are so super small. So some of them I might straight color, some of them I might just use two colors. Okay, so some of the colors I'm picking up are Dahlia Purple, I picked up Lilac, and Lavender. I have those sitting over here. So I have Hot Pink, and I wanna grab Mulberry. I think I'm also gonna grab Process Red. So what I did is I just used the color wheel to choose the contrasting color, which would be red violet. And then I used the swatch chart to choose some red violets. So here are my red violets. I've got the mulberry and the dahlia purple, as I said earlier. This color process red kind of falls under a red violet. And then I've got some other colors that are lighter to be able to blend in with those. So I've got lilac, I have lavender, and I have, this one is so short, I can't even see the name on it. 993, I think is hot pink. So I've got hot pink too, and I don't know, maybe I want something just a little bit lighter. I think I'm gonna grab blush pink too for a lighter pink. Okay, so what I'm gonna do with all of these colors and I'm just going to pick and choose and alternate them and blend different ones together and just kind of spread all of these colors out all around for all of the different leaves. So I think I'm gonna start with the mulberry and I'm gonna color the leaves on top of the frog first. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of mulberry here on these leaves. Okay, so as you can see, I just added a little bit of that mulberry there and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the blush pink and I'm gonna go over that color and pull it down. And then I'm gonna do that again just to add another layer and some more color. And anywhere that I have one leaf laying over the other, I'm gonna make sure I add a little bit more of the mulberry in those spaces. And then I'm just gonna come back with my blush pink and blend those colors together. And that set of leaves is done. So I have some down here too, and they are the same leaves, so I'm gonna color them the same color and do exactly the same thing as I did on those other leaves. And then come back and add another layer and blend it out. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing for all of these leaves that look like this. And then there's some more here. And again, if you just wanted to use one color on these leaves, you could surely do that as well. If I wanted to come back and grab a darker color and add a little bit more depth and dimension to these little tiny leaves, I can do that as well. I would probably grab something that was a super dark purple though if I was gonna do that. And it looks like there's more of these down here that are super, super tiny, but that is a super quick way just to color. Little small spaces like that, you just lay down a little bit of your darkest color and then use a lighter color and blend it out. It looks like I have more of these type of leaves over here as well. Now, if I wasn't doing sort of a tutorial here and talking my way through it, I'm sure that this would be much quicker and I could just go through and pick my colors super quickly and get it done much, much faster. But when I'm filming, I do like to explain absolutely everything that I'm doing because I know for those of you that are beginners, you do really appreciate that. You let me know all the time in the comments. Okay, so I've got all of those done. Okay, so for this one here, I think I'm gonna start with the Dahlia Purple, but I want them to look quite different. So I'm gonna go with one of these other shades that I chose that have more purple in them. I think I'm gonna go with the Lilac. So I'm gonna lay my Dahlia Purple, which is quite a bit darker and has more purple in it than the Mulberry does. And I'm just gonna go up and down these lines to add this color in here. And then of course, just like I did in the other section, I am gonna use my Lilac to just blend all of these colors together. And I think for these, I'm gonna use a little bit of the white of the paper. So I'm gonna leave a little space there as I blend these together. But you can see how these 
now look very different than these other ones here. And if you haven't seen some of my videos where I show you how to use the white of the paper to create that little bit of an extra pop, especially when you're coloring very small spaces like this, this is just a really quick little hack or fun thing to do to make some of the images on your coloring pages stand out just a little bit more and you don't need a third color. Okay, so I'm gonna take the Dahlia Purple and add another layer. Now I'm actually thinking for this one here that I wanna grab a color. I'm actually thinking for this one here that I want it to stand out a little bit more. I think that some of these areas in this one particular section don't look separated enough and I want a much darker color to be able to line that. Now since I'm using colors that have more purple in them, I am going to grab something that is a very dark, dark purple or a violet. You can see by looking at the color wheel that here where we've got our red violets, if we go a little bit this way, we do have violet. So I'm gonna choose a color that is pretty close to this section of the color wheel. I think that I'm actually just gonna go with violet. So I'm gonna grab that one. I'm just gonna use the violet to create a little bit more depth and dimension and separation between these spaces. And then I'm just gonna take my lightest color, which was the lilac, and spread that color out a little bit, making sure that I don't go into those spaces where I wanted to see the white of the paper. Now I'm gonna come and do these leaves over here and I'm gonna change them up just a little bit again. Now I've got two of my shorties. I've got mulberry, which I used over here in these leaves, but I'm gonna take the lavender that I used over here. So I'm gonna start with the mulberry and again, I'm just gonna lay this color down and then I'm gonna use the lavender. And I'm gonna come back with a second layer of the mulberry and again, blend it a little bit with the lavender and I'm gonna use again a little bit of the white of the paper. So those are done and they look a little bit different than these because of the lavender has a little bit more purple in it. And then they look very different from this side, but I like it because they kind of blend in with what I did over here and these are pretty close to one another. I do think I wanna grab the violet and maybe do the same thing that I did over here and just add a little bit of depth to these. And then again, I'm just gonna use the lavender and blend those colors together. So we have these little pieces that are sticking up here. I think I'm going to use the process red and color these in quickly and I think again I'm going to have to use the white of the paper because these are super small spaces and then these up here I'm just going to straight color. Okay so those are done. Those were quick and then over here I've got some more and these aren't laying over one another so I'm just going to straight color these in with the process red. So I think I'm going to use the process red again and I'm going to lay this down here and then I'm gonna use the blush pink again to blend this out. And I'm just adding another layer. But these look a lot pinker than some of the other leaves on the page. Okay, so I've got quite a lot of purple over here and I think I'm gonna have to bring the purple out here. So I'm gonna grab the violet and I think I'm gonna blend it with a much lighter color. I'm gonna to try to use just two colors on these, so I'm gonna use the violet along with the hot pink. And I think I'm gonna start over here just by lining these spaces that Johanna drew in here for us. And then I wanna just do this super quick, so I'm just gonna blend it in with the hot pink and do these fairly quickly. So now these have some of the purple along with the pink. But I'm just working on creating a little bit more dimension here by again lining around some of these spaces. And then we're just adding the second layer. So I think these need a little something more. I'm gonna grab the mulberry and add a little bit of this in here. For these, I'm gonna use the violet and lay this in here. I'm probably gonna use the violet and the lavender. Actually, I meant to say lilac. I'm gonna use the violet and the lilac because I want these to look more purple. What I'm essentially doing is just bringing the purple from down here up to here just to make it look a little bit more balanced. And then of course the second layer. Now you could see on these, I'm really not adding more than two layers on each one of these. They're just super small spaces and they get done fairly quickly. And then again, a second layer with the lilac. And I did use a little bit of the white of the paper in those as well. 
And I think I'm going to do the same thing for these down here because it's just super quick and easy. I'm going to line all the way around these little leaves and then I'm just going to use the lilac to pull the color up and around and use a little bit of the white of the paper. And then again come back and do a second layer the same way. Okay so now we're going to come over here to this side and I think I want these to look quite the same. So these that are the same as the ones over here, I'm just going to do the same thing to really quickly quickly. So I have the violet and then I'm just going to use the lilac and spread the color around. So gosh, what colors didn't I use? I think I used all of the colors that I chose. I think I want some pinks over here for this one. I'm still not really crazy about how these turned out, mixing the purples with the pinks. I don't think I'm going to add the purple on these. I'm going to make them look a little bit different. And I'm going to use just the red violets. I don't think I've mixed yet together the Dahlia purple and lavender. I don't remember, but I'm going to do that on these. So I'm just laying down the Dahlia purple and we're going to do this pretty quickly. Again, I'm just lining it with the Dahlia purple and I'm going to use the lavender to spread the colors out. And I think I like these a lot more than what I did over here on the other side. And if you're ever coloring and you do something that you just don't like or you're not happy with, you can always grab an eraser and erase it. If I wanted to, I could erase that and make it look just like I did the other side because I like this a lot more. So I'm just gonna come back over here and try to make this look a little bit different. I'm using the Dahlia purple and just going over where I laid that lavender. And I think just by adding another layer it will make it look a little bit better. Anytime you're not happy with something you do on your coloring pages, there's always a way to fix it. But yeah, I think I like that a lot better. Okay, y'all, so I grabbed my stickles because this little frog would not be complete without some stickles. <laughs> and so I'm just going to pick some colors from here. I've got this color that's kind of like a green gold. I think that's going to look really pretty on the frog. So I'm going to grab that color. It matches really, really well. I think this is actually really pretty. I don't know that I've ever used this one before. This is one that came in a three pack, so it doesn't actually have the color name on it. But if you're ever looking for stickles, I will always have the link down there where you can grab stickles for the cheapest price. And you can also buy them on Amazon in packs. There's actually one pack on Amazon that has my favorite colors in it. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this color too. This one's called Thistle, and hopefully these aren't dried out and I'll be able to use them. I've got lavender too. Okay, so I think I'm gonna start with the lavender. So I'm just gonna go over some of these leaves that I did with the purple, but I'm not going over the whole thing. I'm just adding a little dot of color. I don't wanna cover what I did with the colored pencils. I just want to add a little bit of sparkle. Y'all know anytime I color in any of Johanna's books, I'm always over here grabbing stickles. <laughs> but the stickles just add so much to your coloring. And I just love the bling, anything bling. I love it. <laughs> okay, so now I have my color that's kind of like a greenish gold. I'm just going to add a little bit of this and spread it around on my frog. So if you spread the stickles around and just move them around with the tip, it will help to not cover up what you did with your colored pencils. Oh, that is super pretty. I hope you all can see that, but it just adds quite a bit of bling. I want to do these leaves over here first, and I think I need like a gel pen or something to do these little dots here, or maybe I'll do stickles for those little dots around the leaves. I don't think I've ever used this color. I think this one is going to look more red. Oh, that's really red, so I'm really going to spread that out. Oh wow, that made these look so much better. Oh, that's a gorgeous color. I don't know why I've never used that one before. Okay, I actually think what I want to do for these little dots over here is I want to bring the green from the frog to the outside. So I'm going to just use this to make these little dots green. Oh, how pretty. So let's do this side now. Oh my gosh, I just love how this little frog turned out. He's so cute. Y'all have to let me know what you think in the comments below, but I just love the addition of the red violets with the violet on top of the shades of green. It just looks so pretty. But this is what you can create using some complementary colors. And this is why a color wheel is so important. And if you don't have a color wheel, you can always go online and Google a picture of a color wheel. There's plenty online that will help you with complementary colors. You can Google what color is complementary to so-and-so, and it will 
give you the answers. But a color wheel is so helpful when choosing your colors. I just absolutely love how the red violets pop off of the shades of green that I used in the frog. I love the addition of the stickles. I'm really enjoying this coloring book. If you would like to see me color something else in this coloring book, please let me know what you would like to see me color. I hope that y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Everything you've seen me use in this video will be linked in the description box below. I hope y'all have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Happy coloring. Bye.